Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Mary Jo, also known as Sojo, and we're going to talk about some more of my quilty stitchy things. Now, I like to say I've been quilting for about 10 years, but actually the journey goes back longer than that. Now, in those 10 years, I've done, I don't know, a hundred or more quilts that are completely finished. However, I still have quilt tops that I just keep accumulating. I don't know how many. I estimate that I probably have over 200 quilt tops. So I thought it would be fun to start pulling all those quilt tops out and do like a trunk show, kind of like in a bed, tur bed turning style. Now, so what I've done is I've decided to do this multi-part series. I don't know how many parts it has because I don't know the exact number of quilt tops. And I've taken all these quilt tops, I've kind of used my couch, pulled the bed on my couch, pulled them out, and we're gonna do a quilt show. And let's, let's see how many I can reach. Now, like I said, I believe I have over 200, but I don't really know. So as I pulled my first bin of quilts out, I just noticed a few things. I was noticing how my quilt journey has evolved and changed from when I first started quilting. Now, the quilts that I pulled out um, are not from the very beginning of my journey because those have all been finished a long time ago. However, I still have a, a several, as I said, well, more than several quilts, quilt tops. So as I'm looking through them, I've noticed a few things. I've noticed how my piecing has improved with accuracy and the precision. I've also noticed how my color placement and color choices and fabric has changed, or just the, fa the patterns and fabric I choose, or even where I'm buying those fabric has changed. So come with me as I come on this journey and talk about all the quilt shop, my quilt tops, how they changed through the years. As I said, I usually say that I've been quilting about 10 years. However, I don't actually think that's entirely accurate because my quilting journey, I believe, evolved long before that. Because before I was a quilter, I was a garment sewer. I used to sew dresses all the time for me and my daughter, as well as, like, you know, pajamas and things. Now, before even that, I, I quilted, or I'm, quilting is the wrong word, but I made a puff quilt, a king-size puff quilt that I had on my bed. And I made that because I had a previous one that, that my grandma got me, and I couldn't find another one anywhere. But I loved it, so I made another one. Now, if you go back even further, my first experience with a sewing machine and sewing was probably high school in home ec. But I can take my quilting journey back even farther because as a child, I grew up around sewing. My mother sewed all the time. I remember being in her sewing room or, or even at the kitchen table with her sewing. So I've always been around it. So I've always had that experience and familiar with those things. Now, I wanted nothing to do with sewing when I was a kid, you know, through middle school and high school. It's not my thing. Why would I ever want to do that? And obviously, things have changed. And even as a child, though, as we're sewing, I remember being took to all the, all the fabric stores with mom, and I remember going to places like Joann's, Peace Goods, Hancock's, and going through all the fabrics, so I've always had that experience. So, therefore, even though I say I've been quilting for 10 years, I wonder if I could really say that my quilting journey has kind of been my whole life. All right, let's get started. What I have here is number one. Now, this quilt I know I got from a pattern in a quilt magazine. I don't know what quilt magazine. I don't know what issue. But the fabric, I remember, came from, came from a couple places. Some of it came from a quilt store in Jamestown called Stitch Between Friends. And then the other fabrics came just from Joann's. Now this is number two. Now I know this fabric and pattern came from Missouri Star Quilt Company and the pattern I believe was called Dresden Coin. Um, I just followed their online tutorial. Now I absolutely love this fabric. I'm not a green fan, but for some reason this one, I remember doing it and I really liked it. I like the fabric so much that I actually have another quilt that's hanging on a quilt ladder upstairs in the same fabric. Now, this one was also made with a layer cake. 
Now, of course, I had to get on board with everybody else and make that jelly roll race. Now, this fabric, once again, got from Joann's. When I pulled this quilt out, I couldn't remember where it came from. But then after thinking about it, I remembered this was actually a quilt along that I did <clears throat> with Fat Quarter Shop and Lori Holt. And it was all the blocks that they pulled out of her vintage Christmas book. The fabric I remember buying from Hobby Lobby. Now this is um, from a Missouri Star tutorial. This is an all flannel quilt. This came from a started from a layer cake, which I also bought from Missouri Star. Now I have no idea what the line of fabric was because it's been so long ago. And then I used flannels for all the backgrounds and borders. All right, now I have number six. Sorry guys, I realized I forgot counting. Now this was a quilt kit that I got on the Markdown at Rack at Creative Notions, which is in Springfield, Ohio. Okay, now we have number seven. Now this pattern was from a shop hop. It's the only shop hop I've ever been to, but I went with a shop hop with my mom and two cousins a few years back in Shipshawana, Indiana. And also, they gave a pattern. All the shops gave a pattern and then they also provided a kit that you could buy. So I bought the kit and this is number seven. All right, now we have number eight. Now this was from a Missouri Star quilt tutorial. And I believe, actually I know, all those fabrics were bought from Joann's. Okay, now we have number nine. Now this was made from the half square, tri half square triangle scraps that were cut off from the previous heart quilt. I just took those half square triangles, trying to trim them down, and turned them into a pinwheel quilt. Number ten. Now, this was a quilt in the day, Eleanor Burns quilt. I don't remember which pattern it was. And looking at it, I believe all those fabrics came from Joann's. All right, now we have number 11. Now, this quilt pattern came from another quilt magazine, which I have no idea which one, and I don't remember which issue. But I know all those fabrics came from a quilt shop here in Jamestown, Ohio, called A Stitch Between Friends. <laughs> Number 12. This also came from a quilt magazine. Now, all those fabrics I got from a quilt shop in Red Rooster, I'm sorry, a, a quilt shop here in Round Columbus called Red Rooster Quilts. Number 13. Now, the fabric all came from Joann's. The quilt pattern I remember I got at a quilt shop called Creative Fires in Springfield, Ohio. The pattern actually came with a kit, which I had already done, and then I just used that pattern and again and made this. This is number 14. This pattern came from another quilt magazine. And all of those fabrics I remember buying at a quilt shop in Jamestown, Ohio called Stitch Between Friends. Okay, now we made it to the end of that first bend that I had. Now please continue to watch my series because this is going to have many parts to it to see if I can reach that over 200 quilt tops that I believe I have. Now, if any of those quilts interest you or you'd like to see quilted, let me know. Comment down below. Maybe I'll throw that one on the long arm next. Now, until next time, Now check back often where we will talk about all of So Joe's Quilty Stitchy Things. Bye!